if you're comfortable reading it, you can start with the tutorial. But the biggest problem people do is they run through the tutorial without really thinking about what they're doing. And then at the end of it, they expect to know programming and they don't know programming. So, for example, if you go and say, sir, I've done five projects in the last year. They're all here on the GitHub. And I'm very enthusiastic about this project. And then what will interviewer says, yes, you can learn databases in theory. But in practice, you, you may not know what to do with it, when, what you're done with learning. So learn if you need it. Hello friends, welcome to uh, our channel. We are starting a tech conversation series here where we'll be talking to experts on topics uh, related to coding, learning, technology, and uh, software development. I have with me today, uh, Mr. Dorei Dorla, who is uh, the founder of IMOF Innovation Center. Welcome, Dorei. Can you please tell us a bit about yourself? Yeah, a uh, boy. Uh, if you are, uh, I'm a, what is called a dinosaur coder, uh, in the sense that uh, I started in 70s, I think 71 is when I wrote my first Fortran 2 program. And uh, after that, I wrote in several languages, including starting with machine language, like assembly and stuff like that. Um, so in between, I stopped for about 15 years because I was running a couple of companies. So basically, I like technology. I like computers. I like software. And I like all the possibilities. And um, I've... Uh, been an entrepreneur, but mostly technopreneur, building products. Uh, my first two companies, I was just doing consulting, um, again, in technology areas like databases and others, and then uh, slowly moved into products. And then we started building some technology and licensing it to a company in the U.S. And then I moved to U.S. We continued building that company, sold it in 96. Since then, I've been kind of a, you know, small uh, technology entrepreneur that means just a few of us. I always like to work with small teams. And uh, I think the way I met you is that uh, I was consulting uh, as an innovation mentor for this college where we wanted to teach students uh, programming. I think probably first year students or something. Mm -hmm. And uh, we decided to teach them scratch uh, because they had no background. And um, Shiny, who is one of your colleagues, uh, was assigned to me for this uh, project. And then she brought you along saying that you are the expert in Scratch. And I think that is when we probably met, I mean, really formally met first time. And so you, me, Shiny, and two of my students, uh, we all, I think, managed about 30, 40 students, taught them Scratch, and we saw surprisingly how interested they got. So there is a clue there. I think uh, the first programming language has to be something that is simple, that's easy, that's visual, and that should be appealing. And within a few minutes, you should be able to produce something. And uh, so that is basically what it is. And then since then, we've been in touch. Uh, we meet in technology forums. We had an initiative called Build to Learn, where used to come to um, actually build small or apps and things like that. Yeah, so uh, I... That's uh, that's how we know each other. That, yes. That's my history of, uh, you know, programmer, entrepreneur, now pretending to be a programmer. <laughs> so that is the... Yeah, uh, so you have worked with students, college students, and of course, teachers. So uh, you see, most of the comments that I get in my social media are from people who doesn't have any background in technology or does not have a computer science degree. Uh, so they ask questions like, how can we come to software development? Uh, so I want to discuss some of those questions with you. Uh, so the first and uh, most uh, uh, fundamental question is, how can uh, we start to uh, learn to code? How do we start? From where do we start? So I think it's uh, it is one of the uh, more difficult questions to answer. Um, if you are if you go to any you know engineering college, or, um, you are already primed for that because many of the schools 
in major metros teach programming at high school level but they teach it very differently and uh, students just consider it as some other subject like physics or chemistry mug up programs and then write them out and you know they don't practice but a few people uh, you know you know start doing practice so the uh, to answer your question i think the best way to do it is to pick a the smallest of problems pick a really small problem pick an easy language and um, there are several easy ones right now python javascript ruby that you can learn in within a couple of uh, hours the rudimentary elements of programming kind of stuff and so programming has several aspects it's actually a tool for solving problems but you initially there is a lot of uh, you know terminology scary things when you look at the book and all that so start with a very simple problem like let's say i want to maybe even a boring problem like convert centigrade to fahrenheit you know the formula is you know um, you know f is equal to c into uh, 9 by 5 um, and then take the result and then add 32 to it and This is something we learned in you know fairly elementary school. So you already know the formula. It said, "Hey, can I take this formula and convert it into a smart program?" So that is how you get started. Then they said, "Oh, okay. Now I know how to do it. So let me do the reverse. Given Fahrenheit, can I generate this equivalent to centigrade? Then I can say, 'Oh, can I have the sum of first n natural numbers?'" And can I do a factorial? Can I do a Fibonacci series? This is a little bit of math, you know, initially math bent. That is one way to start. Another way to start is that I like art, visual uh, things. So can I simply draw a square? Can I draw a circle? Can I draw an ellipse? Can I draw, you know, shapes that are made up of all these things? And uh, there are libraries for doing it. You don't have to really worry about it. You just need to know a square. all sides are equal and it's like a uh, you know has four sides and that's all so there are um, facilities like code.org that you can just go to into they lead you step by step into writing the simple programs or uh, when you pick a language like python there is a module called turtle that will let you draw the line you know turn by 90 degrees draw another line you know turn by 90 degrees draw this line like repeat this like four times and you have a square and uh, that's what we start students uh, the important thing is uh, you need to lose the fear that it's something complex the uh, and the your first program may not even work that's because you would have typed some mistake and all that sort of stuff you need to um, uh, you know give yourself uh, you know the courage that Hey, I know I'm going to make a mistake, and I'm going to find the mistake. And that finding the mistake is called debugging, and that's how you start. Then you attempt it, and they say, "Hey, why didn't it work?" And I said, "Why does the square look like, uh, you know, it's not in the right angles? The sides are not correcting, and all that." Then you would have typed that instead of 90 degrees turning someplace, you would have typed nine degrees. Um, then, oh, okay, this is, looks different from all these things. Let me go correct it. so then you know that's how you start you start with the writing really simple, simple tiny programs uh, you know you take a language and if you use something like javascript it is a web based language so you can do it all in the browser um, if you pick something like python you can start with uh, in the laptop the only issue that you have with starting programming is that you can unfortunately today you can't easily start with your mobile device okay some day it will be possible uh, you may be able to speak your program and the mobile device will be able to build it and there are some elements of that available today but you, you know and that's how and you start with shapes or you start with numbers or you start with something that says hello and then as hello what's your name and then it takes input and said when you say somia i said Hello, Somia. How are you doing? And so, just a, like a two or three line program, but it makes you feel that you know you have interactive program. It's now it's dealing with text, so numbers, figures, or text. You start whichever is something that you comfortable with. You start with that, and then you go to the next step. Yeah. 
So uh, one one thing is, oh, most of us, most of them start with tutorials, tutorials or books, not not like with small programs or projects. So what's your thoughts on you know starting and going with the tutorials and doing the projects the uh, how do we how do we get out of that without uh, you know getting stuck in the tutorial world or without even doing uh, taking a tutorial how can you do small projects actually the tutorials are not bad except that if staying in tutorial see for every small tutorial problem uh, let us take a simple print hello world program mm -hmm. almost in every language you, you start with that right how do you know that there is a statement called print? How do you know that uh, in you have to type print and you put parentheses, parentheses and you put within quotes, hello. There's so much of knowledge right there. And this is, I'm talking about a Python or a JavaScript. It's even more complex in C. You have to write some five, six lines of code before you get to that. In Java, it's even more. So somebody has to lead you and tell you this is how it looks like. So if you don't want to do a tutorial, you watch a video. And I think nowadays, they, you know, the younger generation, they do a lot by just watching videos. You know, they learn how to play with Rubik's Cube. Uh, they learn, you know, like uh, Minecraft. You know, I'm talking about, uh, you know, children, this six, seven year old age group learn for doing this kind. Of. So when you see somebody doing it, you, you can do it. If you're comfortable reading it, you can start with the tutorial. But the biggest problem people do is they run through the tutorial without really thinking about what they're doing. And then at the end of it, they expect to know programming and they don't know programming. So even if you start with the tutorial, there is no problem. So when you say print hello world, you say print hello world, then you say print what else can you print? You know, print hello mom, hello dad, hello teacher, hello. And then you have, what what changes does it require? And then do I have to put hello world in the same string? So can I just print hello and a space and then add mom or dad or teacher or something like that to it? So you need to start exploring and uh, you learn by exploration. You learn by practice. And the reason for the practice is that it's easy to make mistakes. But when you keep doing it again and again and again, you'll, you'll become better. You'll not make the same mistake again. Everyone, when everyone starts with tutorials, they start with programs, doing uh, the basic programs in any language. And when do we, when do we start doing projects? Like, you know, to get a job, you, you have to have your own projects, real world projects. How okay. that? So there is, um, I, I'm going to direct you to a book, uh, uh, not book, an article, um, you know, by Peter Norvig. Uh, which says learn programming in 10 years yeah. and i know that if if you read that people will soon because everybody thinks they can learn it in 10 minutes because there are all these books that say learn programming in 24 hours and all that so i think they're not completely wrong but they're not completely right either so one is there are several things about programming that you need to kind of understand one is that once you pick a language, the language has a syntax, certain statements. For example, I'll talk about Python. Python has statements like, you know, if, you know, for loop, while loop, you know, or, and then they have data structures. Things like integers, floating point numbers, the basic data structures, and also lists and sets and dictionaries and all that. So, you need to keep practicing programs till you are comfortable using many of these statements. You don't have to learn them by heart. You can look them up anytime you want. The syntax itself is the way that whole thing is structured. But what you need to do is you need to know how to take a problem and then break it down into a set of these statements and then use a set of data structures. For example, the the centigrade to Fahrenheit conversion pro problem that we talked about, you should be able to express an equation in Python. And you will know that when you say C into nine by five, that nine by five have, will be evaluated first. But if you put parentheses, you know, you, you, or we can say C into 1.8, whatever you want to do, 
you there is an order in which expressions are evaluated for example so there are these simple rules that the programming language has and you need to learn them and be comfortable with them there is nothing wrong in not knowing them because the program may not work first time and you may be scratching your head and say oh what did i do wrong and you know that kind of stuff so 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 first you need to be familiar with the uh, you don't have to know all the statements in fact you need only about seven different statements to learn most of the programming languages the, the core constructs are what is called assignment or variable definition so when i say c equals 25 that means c is the name of the variable 25 is the value that is being assigned these are called numeric letter so variables and assignment assigning values to variables um doing arithmetic operations with variables i can say b is equal to 25 c plus b is equal to 50 right so then you need to know a little bit of input output i said what is your name you said you type soumya and then i should be able to take that soumya and then assign it to another variable the different kind of variable it's now it's called a string variable so these once you understand the core concepts now then you can say if suppose the user didn't type anything and then when they asked for name and simply hit a return you can simply say hello or some or say hey you know i asked for a name you are not typed a name how do you detect that for that you do what is called if this value is like there is no value there if the length of that string is equal to 0 then you ask for the string again for so now you suddenly realize that oh a simple input statement is not necessary is not enough you, you need to put it in a loop till you get an actual value right and these are the constructs that you need to so once you need the constructs then you can say draw a square and let's say that i go through uh, draw a line of 100 pixels make a right turn draw another line make a right turn you keep by 90 degrees you keep doing this right but you can write eight statements you know like uh, you know in turtle it's forward 100 right 90 and then you say why do i have to write so many statements what if i want to do a you know decagon or you know 10 sides you know i have to write 20 statements there is something wrong here so i said how can i repeat these two statements again and again and again for that you look for the in the programming language so lots of times you feel the need for something and you look for it in the programming language you find it they find out oh there are two ways i can do it i can use a while loop or i can use a for loop or i look for a program and then i see the program using it uh, on the on the internet and then i copy the code and then i try it out and then i play around with it um, a little bit so you need to be very comfortable with the actual constructs of the programming language you need to understand the data Uh, structures basically in this case you know data types and then there are data structures that you can build out of types once you are comfortable then you have so that is one part that is that's very specific to the programming language okay. they are very similar but it is different from ba- visual like visual basic different uh, in javascript different in python different in ruby all these things so once you stick to the programming language and you become familiar with it the next is somebody gives me a problem is that calculate uh, converts integrate to fahrenheit you should know okay centigrade to fahrenheit so i should get centigrade as an input from the user okay and i need to apply this formula and then i need to do this calculation then i need to print so i need an input statement and a print statement and i have an equation so you start converting that problem that somebody has given you in english into a set of programming language statements and then you start becoming more and more like in the going back to the square example what is what is 90 degrees somebody gave it to me so i did 90 degrees i got a square what if i want to draw a triangle intuitively you know that in stuff four sides it has to be three sides should the angle be what should the angle be people will say immediately oh 60 degrees um so you, i tell them okay go ahead try 60 degrees whether you're turning right or left you know in one case it will work in one case it won't work so how do i get this 90 degrees 
and then you think about it a little bit more and here is where guidance will help then said the sum of all the angles inside a, any geometric regular shape is 360 degrees so what happens be 360 divided by 4 i get 90 so if i want to do a triangle 360 by 3 120 so now i said oh i can draw any figure so now i can write a small function that given the number of sides and the length of the side it can draw it it will it will automatically calculate the angle you don't have to supply the angle at all so this the called functions okay there are similar constructs in every language so once you start taking your complex programs and convert them into simple functions that you start reusing now you are ready to go and take on so you learn three things first thing you learnt is the core language second thing you learnt is how to write reusable code like write functions the third thing you learnt is how to translate an english or tamil or whatever statement of a problem, a problem. into a series a of uh, yeah problem into a series of instructions that the computer can understand or the programming language can understand once you do that then you practice 100 such little programs and i picked orbitally 100 because it will just increase your confidence it could be 20 it could be 30 it could be 40 or whatever it is then you go to uh, you know look up saying what are some simple problems that i can solve somebody will say write a library management system so i don't know what it is so write a imagine that you are running a bookstore or used bookstore and uh, come up with a problem of your own so if you can come up with the problems you, on your own then you can even slightly modify the problem to suit your programming skills then build it and then it may improve it again and again yeah, so unless you can implement a, a few correct do a project so i would say that you know sometimes it may be 20 lines and sometimes it will be 50 lines sometimes it will be 100 lines you you feel comfortable writing these programs testing them and converting actual uh, problems stated in a non programming language into your, uh, your favorite programming language you are now ready to go on take on the projects and then when somebody says okay uh, you go to a bookstore uh, used bookstore owner and said oh i can compete your bookstore so that you don't have to when somebody comes in the house for a book you can easily find it you say how do you do that and then you explain to them and said what do i need and said oh you have to take all the books give you all the titles and i'll put it in the computer so when somebody comes and types a title you will tell whether the book is there or not i said okay great in you know, we start with that then suddenly you'll start up with a problem book was there but somebody took it so now i said oh now i need to improve it and then say book is there in the shelf or book is there in the store or you know it was there in the store but it was lent out so it is not there in the shelf anymore and then you can say oh who took it when is it going to be back so now you know that oh i need to add a date on which it was borrowed a date on which it will be returned you know or whether i have multiple copies of the book so your problem will keep expanding and you'll start writing code to expand the problem that is essentially how you learn to do simple projects so you start with the core syntax of the language then start doing programs simple programs and then go to projects or real world problems you find problems and solve them using what you have learned so uh, I, another question that i have there is you keep doing programs right or obviously in uh, technical interviews they ask basic uh, not basic programs not projects uh, may, they they may ask you what projects you have done but then in the interview they give you programs so should we do parallelly both practicing these programs like we have a uh, we have so many websites like hackerank uh, they give you competitive coding problems right so should we parallelly do this and do projects in i mean in job perspective as a as a developer yeah, there are two things right if you are a fresher if you say you are a beginning programmer let's say you are a student because both of us deal with students and you will notice that they are not tasked we know you know nobody asks for algorithm knowledge and all that they'll know they'll ask you oh do you know have you studied algorithms mm-hmm. tell me what you have studied you know oh, sorting algorithms some binary search and 
So you you have some, can you write a binary search? Can you write a bubble sort? That kind of stuff. And uh, there are a lot of uh, hacker and code chef. Um, there are many of these uh, challenges that you can practice, right? That is one thing to do. In the, but there are v- techniques for turning the interview such that they'll ask you the questions in the areas where you are comfortable. So, for example, if you go and say, sir, I've done five projects in the last year. They're all here on the GitHub. And I'm very enthusiastic about this project. And then what the interviewer says, okay, tell me about your project. What did you do? What are your challenges? What was easy to do? <coughs> Can you show me the project? Can you show me the code? So if you've already done prior work, you're less likely to be asked all these algorithmic questions and all that sort of stuff and more likely to be you know, talking about your projects. So that is one technique. It may not work everywhere because there are certain companies have, they'll give you programming problems to solve on paper. Then they ask you to write slightly bigger programming problems. But almost all companies today, instead of asking a lot of theoretical questions, they found out that that doesn't work because a lot of people can answer theoretical questions well, but can't even write a working file and program. So more and more people are saying coding problems. And coding problems, all these, uh, you know, see, even if you go to uh, Hacker Rank and other uh, such coding, uh, you know, hackathon based, uh, you know, services, they also have practice problems that you can solve. Mm-hmm. So you, you don't, there you're not competing with anybody, you're not working, you're not participating in a hackathon, you're just practicing lots of problems. So you can start with that, see how well you do it and how good you, your solution is compared to others, how to make it better. And then, you know, you get a certificate. Then if you get a certificate, then people will say, okay, right, you got a coding certificate. Um, you can do that. You can take free courses like Udacity and Coursera. Uh, they're what are called MOOCs, you know, ma- you know, massive open online courses. Many of them are free, but certification, you may have to pay some money. Udemy, but they're all fairly inexpensive. Geeks for geeks. There are so many of these. Mm-hmm. You can take a course. They'll make you do what is a um, you know, couple of projects. Project. And then they'll certify that you've done the project. And uh, you start with that. You're starting with an advantage. Uh, they're not going to ask you very basic syntactical questions because nobody remembers syntax anymore. I mean, unless you've been like soaking in a programming language for a long time. I, I don't even know what is the default dictionary in Python or, you know, there are all these constructs, you know, how to decorate it works and all those kinds of things. It'll take some time for me to explain clearly. So, so. Okay, so when I start, say, doing real world projects, okay, I am asking from a learning perspective, when you actually take a problem and start to solve it, I may have to learn a lot of things. If, if I'm, say, developing a, a full stack uh, application, I may have to study databases front end and maybe if i'm using machine learning i have to study machine learning so how much i i have a problem i want to solve that problem how much of each of this i should study like should i study full databases and then should i go with uh, learn some front end libraries and then and then i should start at the end how what is the procedure of learning to do a project so unless you know generally most of what you study just evaporates unless you practice. So I would rather um, study a little, practice a little, study some more, practice some more. And then, you know, internally, because what happens, you study something, you think you understand everything. You see an example problem, oh, I know I can do that. And then suddenly you you, you close the book and do the problem. And then you start, hey, what was the syntax? Was the statement before this or after that? Does it really matter? When I say forward 100 followed by right 90 to draw a line, or should I put right 90 and forward 100, there is a difference, right? Mm-hmm. You'll get all these doubts. So in, in friendly programming languages, you can just, doesn't matter. You you think that this is how it should work, try it out. And then you'll suddenly notice that instead of drawing a horizontal line, it wrote, drew a vertical line. So that's because I put right before, forward. Okay, so it turned the uh, you know the turtle turned right and it just drew like this. 
so you will realize it so i think the best thing is to learn incrementally a small amount at each time assimilate it by practice and then make some notes uh, for the more complex things like mm. or keep a reference there are that's why you have this what are called programming cheat sheets mm. there's a python programming cheat sheet in java cheat cheat sheet is nothing but a sheet that contains all the common uh, patterns of programming or some some cases it idioms some cases the syntax of the statements and things like that so you keep that because nobody remembers everything in the first 6 months 1 year 2 years kind of stuff depending on what you're learning second thing is yes, you can learn databases in theory but in practice you you may not know what to do with it when what you're done with learning so learn if you need it right and i mean if it's a subject in your course obviously you have to study it but i'm talking about real learning for practice you learn a little bit so you may initially start with uh, okay what is a database you know it's a set of tables you know what is a table it's a, you know it's uh, information organized like a table it has rows and columns so what are rows those are the uh, called records or rows and that contains information about one person so if it's a person table the columns represent the attributes of a person the name of a person the age of a person or a birth year uh, can, from which you can compute the age uh, the height the weight depending on what application in some other application they may require what is your qualification so they said okay i want to represent all these attributes of a person and you represent it in a table and then what operations do i want to do i want to add a new person to the table i want to remove a person from the table because they left the employment or they left the college or whatever so student records or employee records then you may want to say hey what titles did they hold before in the, in the case of employee database so as you need more things you build and say okay all the employee information can go into an employee table now i want a job table because which describes all the jobs independent of employees what jobs do we have in this company so you start thinking in terms of how, what is the information how to organize it how to link it okay and then then how to query it you know how to insert new records how to delete records when the table becomes really big big contains 10000 records 100000 records it is slow how to make it faster so there is a technique called indexing and so you will learn as you go along and so learn as you need so that is one but that is not the only way i'm proposing what you do is you take a quick scan of the entire thing of what are all there in the database okay it has a create table drop table which are the organizing ones these are called data definition language then you have insert delete update select for statement for manipulating uh, data in the table that's it that's all your databases there are some other fancy things views and indexes and all that sort of stuff you will come to it much later similarly machine learning what are the core principles or oh, there are the supervised learning unsupervised like so if you go top down get all the concepts broadly and then but to practice you start bottom up and then take something and use it like for example can you predict the height of a, a person in a certain community and what do you do you take 500 members of the community uh, find their heights and then say that you know age height weight and then you can try to predict the height and weight of a person given you know they live in this locality or given their this age group for example so so you they use then you prediction problem then you have a clustering problem so can you cluster people based on their income levels or their jobs and that kind of stuff But jobs clustering you don't record machine learning it can be done fairly easily so what you do is you again the mantra is you come up with a problem and then you learn what is needed to solve the problem and then you do more varieties of problems like that And then you learn more because of that, and because it sticks. 
So if you learn everything and then you go back and you scratch your head and I said, huh, what did I learn? What is that SVM? What is this like K-means clustering? And you, it will not say, okay, K-means clustering means this is a clustering. Means I know what means is. This K thing, I don't know what it is. So let me go on Google and find out. But, oh, K is just like N, a variable that we use in this kind of thing. And, you know, I need to divide this whole data into K clusters. And that's what it means. And how do I find out K? So, oh, there is a elbow method that will teach you K. So what happens is you incrementally go learn as you need. And then you have the context as to why you are learning it. And yeah. So the answer to the question is, yeah, do a top-down, understand all the basic concepts, but don't worry about details. Details will come and solidify in your mind when you actually use them for programming. Mm -hmm.